We'll also do multiple choice problems about kinematics graphs because they really probe how well you understand sort of the conceptual calculus aspect of kinematics. So here is one graph. It's uh, velocity versus time. Starts at the origin, so zero velocity. Increases from A to B. And then at B, it turns around and decreases the velocity down back to zero at C. And the velocity was negative out to D. So here's a few questions about that graph. So let's just go through them one at a time. So first is, at which point does the mass change direction? So this is the motion of some mass. At which point does it change direction? So let's see, you might think here, but no, here is where it just uh, begins to slow down. Right? So here if we have increasing velocity, the thing is accelerating forward, and it begins to decelerate, but it's still moving forward because we're still on the positive V side, the positive side of the origin. So it's really here. Right here it goes from positive velocities to negative velocities. So this is where it actually changes direction. So it must be C. I think I got it right. Where is the maximum displacement from where it started? Okay, so that uh, is a little trickier. We, we have to think about our calculus. If we have the velocity time graph, to get acceleration you take the derivative. But to go up to position, Remember, it's the area under the curve. Right? So the area under the curve is uh, equivalent to the difference in position or the displacement. So we're going to say if we follow this to increasing time, where is the area under the curve maximum? Okay, so like if we only went to here, then there's the area under the curve. If we went all the way to B, there's the area under the curve. But if we keep going, it actually gets bigger, right? So here it is going up to C. So at C, the area under the curve is the whole area under that triangle. But now let's go past C, and what happens is it's the area, uh, it's really under the curve but above the axis. Because when you go on this side, you're starting to contribute negative velocities to the integral, and the integral is just a sum. So when you start to contribute negative velocities, you start to reduce the answer. So the displacement starts to get smaller once you get past here. So really the biggest positive area under the curve you have, again, is at C, because this is all positive. If we start to put these in, those are negative contributions. So same thing, C. Where is the greatest um, acceleration? Well, let's think about that for a minute. Um, the acceleration is greatest where? So if we were to go ahead and make an acceleration plot real quick, what would it look like? So A, it's a positive acceleration up, there's the origin, and negative acceleration. This is going to be positive, right? So here we were going uh, increasing the velocity there, and then here is decelerating. So the acceleration curve basically looks like this. It's accelerating for a while, that's decelerating the rest of the way. So there's A, and there's B, and C, and D. Even though the velocity is positive and negative, it's decelerating the whole way, because it's the slope that tells you the acceleration. So the answer is in the range A to B. Right? So the greatest acceleration is between A and B. And then finally, uh, could you draw this? Well, I guess if you're giving a truthful answer, you could just say yes or no, and if it's about your ability, then it'll be right. But we really mean, is it possible to draw this? Uh, the position time graph, can we draw it? Technically, you can't. You can't draw it perfect because although we know how the displacement will change, we don't know where the particle started or where the mass started. So we would actually need an initial position to be able to draw this. So let's say if xi equals 0 at the origin, if it starts at the origin, then yeah, we could draw it. Um, it would look like this. Let's see. I'm going to draw to do. It's going to stay positive, actually. Draw it here. Plus x is up here. Uh, this is the origin, and it starts here. Okay. So we have an accelerating particle, right? It's going to move initially at zero velocity, and its uh, slope is going to increase because its velocity is increasing. So it starts off like this. All right, so that's from say A to B. 
And then to draw the next part, you got to realize it's still going forward. So it's a positive velocity, but it's not increasing, it's decreasing. So you've got to draw this curve in a way that the slope is still positive, but it's getting smaller. Okay, so the way you do that is you kind of change the inflection. Here it's like this, you make it like that. Right? So you go like that. So that's from B to C. And I take it all the way, so it came in accelerating, decelerating, and I made it go all the way to flat because it takes it to the where the velocity is zero. And then moving forward, uh, we have the case that now the slope becomes negative and it becomes increasingly negative. So then it kind of looks like the other side of the parabola there, like that. Or you can think of this as free fall, right? So here we have a negative acceleration just like free fall. That's why it makes a parabola this way and then it kind of makes a parabola that way. So it's something like that. 